Hi and welcome back. This is Steve from Bucks Coins, and we have a pre-decimal hunt for you today. So let's get started. First one, Queen Elizabeth II. It's got to be a half crown. Look at the size of it. It is, and it's from the last year of mintage of the pre-decimal coins. That's 1967. They were minted in uh, 68, 69, and 70 but they tended to carry the date of 1967. This one, in very good condition. So that's 1967, half crown. Very highly minted. Next one we have is a George V. This one is a well is a well-used penny. It is from 1912. It has a lot of oxidization, I suppose you could call it. There's this uh, patina to it that you see, tend to get with the old pennies and half pennies. It's a, a rich, dark, almost bright mahogany colour. The thing that you can make out compared to quite a few coins of this era is the fact that the legend of one penny is fairly clear. The only rubbing that is obvious is here on the shields where you would normally get the Union Jack on the shield and that's been rubbed away slightly and you can't see it very clearly. We go from George V to George VI, his son, his, his second son. And the Queen's father. This one is from 1943. It's a penny. He doesn't have the rich, dip rich colour that you get you got on the previous coin. This one it ends in the, this one is from the year that the Second World War ended, 1945. But you can still see even in this coin, the shield of Britannia is rubbed, and you can't make. You can make out the British, sorry, the Union flag, but it's, you know, it's still fairly rubbed. The text on it is fine. Quite, 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 a, good, quite a good quality for that, for that year. Elizabeth II, this is a two bob, a florin, two shillings, as all of them were well-known phrases for this particular coin. This one's from 1955. It has the Tudor rose at the center, then the, then the flowers of the other three countries that make up England, uh, make up the United Kingdom. You've got the thistle from Scotland, you've got a clover from Ireland, and you've got a leek from Wales, all coming off this central rose. The castellated threepenny bit, or threepence, or three pennies, from 1948. It's one of the oldest style of this castellated 3p. It has the flax seeds in the centre there, coming out of the crown. It is a George the fifth, uh, sorry, George the sixth coin. 1948. You compare that to this Strepney bit, which is Her Majesty's portrait from 1967, which was the last year. And the design on the back has gone from the flax to the portcullis. This portcullis is the symbol of the House of Commons, but it was also the uh, one of the her heraldic symbols used by the Plantagenet families. I think uh, the Pole family in particular used this one. Next we have a shilling or a bob as we used to call them. One shilling from 19... 
that 67? 1967 has a Majesty the Queen on it. These carried on, of course, we've just seen the, the bringing out the 50p and the shilling actually carried on and was used as a 5p for the first two or three years after the decimalisation of our coins and this was used as a 5 pence. The two shilling that you saw just before was a 10 pence. Now for one of the coins that disappeared at the time of decimalisation, which was the half penny. Queen Elizabeth II, 1957. It shows the galleon on a fairly stable sea, fairly quiet sea. This, this coin has changed and you do get a choppier sea underneath on some of them. So you need to look out for the differences. Our next coin on here is from 1959. Shows Her Majesty the Queen. It's, it's a little sixpence. So it's so the smallest of the silver coins. We also used to call this a tanner. And when decimalisation first started, this was kept on for a short while and with a two and a half P. Okay, so that's the sixpence. We have another one for our date run of Threepenny Bits. It's a 1942 castellated three pence or Threepenny Bit. It's George the Sixth. On the back is the flax seeds. Oh, we seem to have a lot of threepenny bits in this particular hall. This one again is the last year that was minted 1967. Threepenny bit. Portcullis on the back. Elizabeth II. And the last threepenny bit, although that, the last coin on this, is again from 1943. And it's a three pence threepenny bit with flax seeds. George VI. Yeah, quite a few threatening bits on this particular hunt. I didn't realise we had so many. A two shillings or two bob bit, 10p, old 10p, from 1949. This one is slightly different from the Queen Elizabeth ones. This one has the rose at the centre underneath the crown. I think it's the Edward, uh, I think it's the St Edward crown. And it has on the side of it, it has the thistle from Scotland on the left of the coin as you're looking. With underneath it is the G for George. And on the right there is the clover, four leaf clover I think, or the clover from Ireland with the R for Rex. And it's either side of the centralised uh, Tudor Rose which has, as I said, has the crown above it. 1949, 1949. Let's have a look at another two shillings. One from 1954 has the standard, whoops, has the standard uh, Tudor rose in the center with the other flowers, the other flowers of the three, the other three flowers, the death, the leek, the um, thistle and the clover or shamrock even it might be coming off the central Tudor rose which was very, this, this particular design is used greatly in Elizabeth II's reign. This one is from 1954, just a couple of years after a coronation. We have two more silver coins before we go back to the brass ones. This one here is an English 1957 shilling or five pence or a bob depending on what you remember and what you used to call these things. And it shows three shielded lines passant. In other words they're lying down and they're within the shield so it's the English 
version of the one shilling and it has the crown, I believe it's the Edward crown above the shield from 1957 so this one's Elizabeth II and the last of the silver coins for this particular hunt is a two shillings from 1964 it's Elizabeth II 1964 with a design that's most prominent in her reign which is a centralised Tudor rose with the symbols of the other flowers of the nations coming off that central Tudor rose right some more pennies not badly worn but are slightly worn this one is from 1939 and it's George the sixth Britannia on the back here is fairly clear the one penny is very clear you've got a lighthouse in the far left of the coin there the only thing that's really rubbed on the back is the Britannia shield it's not showing the Union flag very clearly you can see that it is the Union flag when you're on closer inspection but it's not pristine or absolutely clear there is some sight uh, fading damage to the coin in the on the right hand side on the face side on the king side the king's bust side but the coin is as I say what is it 1939 so it's talking 80 odd years old so it's not done too badly I suppose another penny this is the ubiquitous 1967 penny last year they were manufactured these big pennies again you've got a clear lighthouse and on that one you've probably got a reasonably clear Union flag last year we of that particular coin 1916 George V this one again is in decent really decent condition considering it's over a hundred years old you've lost the detail in the shield of Britannia you've lost some of the detail in the dress of Britannia where she's sitting this one is 1916 the one and the penny is still visible the trident is still visible although it is faded in the centre part here so you have got some fading with this coin but you know this coin is what a hundred and what's a hundred and five years old so it's not doing too bad is it I wish I was that good at 105 well I hope I'm not good at 105 this one's even older it's 18 1898 can't be right one second please must bring in microscope it might be 1893 I've got a feeling it should be before that to be honest yeah 1893 I do find that um, quite a newer a new coin really because it's got oops, the original young bust of Victoria on it young bust of Queen Victoria on it but it's dated 1893 I thought this particular bust was more associated with the 1860s it's a bit of a quandary though it's, the, it's uh, what they call the bun the bun uh, the bun coin because you have Victoria's hair in a bun right on this right hand side I thought that was a coin more of the 1860s and 70s rather than the 1890s because of in the 1890s particularly this late into a reign she had the um, older veil bust so it's unusual that one needs a bit more investigation on my part and this one is a half penny anybody can, can anybody notice any difference in this to a normal half penny that we're so used to yeah it doesn't have the it doesn't have the ship on it it's got Britannia 
It's from 1936. It has the Britannia we all know and love from the penny. And again, the shield, the, the flag on the shield has gone virtually completely. But the rest of it is in pretty good nick. So George V, half penny. And 1936 was his last year of his reign and it also became known as the Year of the Three Kings. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the Year of the Three Kings is George V died in early January of 1936. His son Edward VIII was pronounced king. He then abdicated towards the end of uh, the year in December without ever going through a coronation. His coronation was due to be around about May or June of, in 1937. However, he abdicated uh, because of his love for a lady called Wallace Simpson and the third king of that year which is why it's sometimes referred to as the Year of the Three Kings, was the Queen's father, George VI, who took over uh, on Edward VIII's abdication. There we go. That's the last coin for this hunt. And there are the coins. If, you've ever, if you are having a hunt, I hope you find the coins you're looking for. If you're buying coins from the web or wherever, I hope you can get the coins you want for the price you want to pay. I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up because it helps the video no end and helps me no end as well to show, show me that you are enjoying the content I am providing. Also, if you've not done so as yet, could you please subscribe? In the meantime, until we meet during our next hunt. Bye-bye for now. Bye.